I write this letter to you tonight as a 41-year-old man who has experienced many, many things in life and has made some mistakes. I have some good news and some bad news for you. The truth is that I'm really here to speak to you about your soul. Yes, your soul. You do have one, believe it or not. Buffon is a living legend, but did you know that he caused a lot of scandals, loved to hang out in nightclubs, and even had to get the psychologist's help due to panic attacks before matches? Let's begin with the bad news. You're 17 years old. You're about to become a real footballer. Like in your dreams, you think that you know everything. But the truth is, my friend, you don't know shit. The history of Buffon as a goalkeeper began on June the 8th, 1990. Then, a 12-year-old boy, he would forever remember the opening match of the World Cup. Argentina, with the main star of football in their team, Maradona, loses to the not well-known team of Cameroon. The young Italian was inspired by the game of goalkeeper Thomas Nakono. That day turned out to be the most important moment in the biography of Gigi. This is evidenced by the fact that Buffon named his first child after the goalkeeper of Cameroon. Later, John Luigi admits that the match brought him out of a severe depression, which almost put an end to his career. But we'll come back to that. Well, I must ask you an important question. Why did you decide to devote your life to football, Gigi? Do you remember? And please, do not just say that it was because of Thomas Nakono. You must go deeper than that. You have to remember every detail. At the age of 13, John Luigi entered the Parma Football Academy. Today, Buffon is an example of professionalism, but it was not always the case. He started smoking cigarettes at the age of 14, hanging out with active fans and neglecting a healthy lifestyle. However, the club was sure that this guy had a great future. Goalkeeper was injured. Alessandro Nista was our backup goalkeeper. It was he who had to be in the starting lineup against Milan. But on Monday at training, Buffon was incredible, and it went on like this day after day. This boy was even better than we thought, but we cannot put him against Milan. If he gets burned, he may not recover from the blow. However, he was incredible again on Saturday. That's why I decided to talk to him that night. In just a couple of days, the 17-year-old Buffon will get the chance to play his first match in Serie A. Probably the debutant should feel anxious and prepare for the game as well as he can. But what does Buffon do? He goes to a nightclub with his friend. They plan to just get a glass of beer. But naturally, the party dragged on and resulted in him peeing on the wheel of a police car. Here's what Buffon thinks years later, remembering that day. You play the movie character, the strong man. This is how you usually cope with this pressure that you don't even know that you feel. Soon you'll be outside the club, arguing with some police officers at one in the morning. Just go home, go to bed, and please, I beg you, don't piss on the wheel of the police car. The officers will not find it amusing, the club will not find it amusing, and you'll risk everything that you've worked for. This is the kind of chaos that you bring upon yourself for no reason. There is a burning inside you that will lead you to make mistakes. Of course, you think that you're showing your teammates that you're strong and free. But in reality, this is a mask that you wear. On November the 19th, 1995, the young Italian goalkeeper made one of the best debuts in the history of football. Milan's best players, such as Roberto Baggio and George Weah, failed to score a goal against Buffon. The next morning, Gigi woke up a star. 17-year-old Gianluigi Buffon with the corner and here is Simone great save by young Buffon a year later he became a regular player on the team two years later he received the nickname Superman and debuted in the national team of Italy Four years later, together with Parma, he wins the UEFA Cup and the Italian Cup. He was recognized as the best goalkeeper of the year in Serie A and the fifth in the ranking of the best goalkeepers in the world. In addition to this, he was nominated for the Golden Ball. Money, fame, and the job of your dreams. Now you're definitely thinking, what could possibly be dangerous about this? Well, this is a paradox. 
fame and glory really clouded Buffon's mind. During these years, feelings of invulnerability and impunity made Gigi put himself above others. He thought he was allowed far more than anyone else. On top of that, at this age, people want him to seem tough, impenetrable. In 2000, John Luigi planned to change his number from 1 to 88, which caused controversy in Italy. The number 88 stands for a long-standing Nazi slogan. The Italian denied the connection, explaining that the number means four balls symbolizing rebirth. Buffon returned after an injury to his hand, which caused him to miss Euro 2000. Under pressure, Gigi still took another number, but this story caused understandable discontent of the fans. Back in September of 99, after the game between Parma and Lazio, Buffon was wearing a t-shirt with the inscription, Death to him who gives up. This is a fascist slogan, which in the 1970s became the main motto of the largest uprising of right-wing radicals in the entire post-war history. Buffon then apologized, explaining that he just wanted to use the phrase to motivate teammates and had no idea about the meaning of these words. You think it's just a motivational cry. You don't know that it is a slogan of the far-right fascists. This is one of the mistakes that will cause your family a lot of pain. There was another incident in Buffon's career. In 1997, to enter the University of Parma for a law degree, Gigi forged a diploma. But of course, the forgery was exposed. It turned out that the star of Parma did not even finish school. At that time, the crime was punishable by a prison sentence. Buffon's whole life was put at risk. The case was closed only in 2001. The goalkeeper managed to evade imprisonment and paid a fine. Later in an interview, he called this incident the greatest regret in his life. On one hand, it's true that a keeper needs confidence. He needs to be fearless. If you give a manager the choice between the greatest technical keeper in the world and the most fearless keeper in the world, I guarantee you that he will choose the fearless bastard every single time. On the other hand, a person who is fearless can easily forget that they have a mind. If you live your life in a nihilistic way, thinking only about football, your soul will start to wither. Juventus paid 52 million euros for the transfer of Buffon. At that time, this was the largest amount of money paid for a goalkeeper in the history of football. The expectations, I think, are a lot. The expense and the effort, also economic, have been notable. And so, what I had to do was just try to work in the best way to not be disappointed. Just think about it, 52 million in 2001. To this day, only two goalkeepers managed to beat this amount. It happened after 17 years. Liverpool paid $60 million for Alisson and $80 million for Kepa's transfer to Chelsea. At the end of the season, John Luigi won the UEFA's Player of the Year award. And not just the best among the goalkeepers, the best among all players. He was the first and only goalkeeper to win this award. That's how good he was. In 2006, he became the world champion and was on the brim of being the second goalkeeper in history who managed to get the Golden Ball Award. At the time, the only goalkeeper with this award was the legendary Lev Yashin. But the award was received by his fellow Italian Fabio Cannavaro. It was the golden age of Buffon's career. Depression is something that will happen at the peak of your career. When you have everything a man could ever want in life, you will be 26 years old. The keeper of Juventus and the Italian national team. You will have money and respect. People will even call you Superman. But you're no superhero. You're just a man like everyone else. And the truth is that the pressure of this profession can turn you into a robot. It started at the end of 2003. For six months for Buffon, everything lost its meaning. It seemed to him that people were only interested in his image. Everyone needed Buffon, but they didn't care how Gianluigi was doing. You go to training, you come home, you watch TV, and you go to bed. It happens every day you win, you lose. It repeats on and on. But every time sponsors and fans demand something from you, they want something new. As the goalkeeper admits one morning, when he got out of bed, his legs began to shake uncontrollably. At first, he thought it was just fatigue or sickness, but it soon got worse. Weakness, fear, and loss of interest in life are what troubled Buffon throughout these months. The goalkeeper said that one day, right before a match of Serie A, he had a panic attack. He approached the goalkeeper's coach and asked not to put him on the team. The problem was solved only with the help of psychologists, whom he previously did not trust. 
Gigi has learned the lesson. You don't have to keep all the problems in yourself, and you don't have to try to prove to the world that you are an Iron Man. He always wanted to be brave, but being brave doesn't mean being soulless. The goalkeeper completely forgot why he started playing football. One day, he decided to mix up the everyday routine by going to another restaurant. On the way, he saw an art museum. Buffon was not a lover of art, but he was struck by a picture that reminded him of his childhood. You go inside, you will see hundreds of paintings by Chagall. Most of them will do nothing to stir you. Some good, some interesting, some that say nothing to you at all. But then you will see one specific painting that will hit you like a lightning bolt. It is called the Promenade. It's an almost childlike image. The woman is flying away into the sky, like an angel, and the man is standing on the ground, holding a hand, smiling. This image will transmit something from another world. It'll give you the feeling of a child, the feeling of happiness in simplicity. Well, I must ask you an important question. Why did you decide to devote your life to football, Gigi? Do you remember? You were 12, yes. The 1990 World Cup was in Italy, yes. The first match was Argentina versus Cameroon at the San Siro, yes. Your grandmother was in the kitchen, making lunch. It was completely dark, except for the yellow glow of the television. You see this strange name, Cameroon. You don't know where Cameroon is. You didn't even know such a place existed before this moment. Of course, you know Argentina and Maradona, but there's something magical about the players from Cameroon. The commentator turns his attention to the goalkeeper. His name is Thomas Nakono. Then, magic. Cameroon scores, and you become so nervous for them to hang on that you cannot physically take it anymore. Finally, the Cameroon players are celebrating. You run straight out into the street. Two other kids from your neighborhood do the same thing. Everyone is yelling, Did you see Cameroon? Did you see Cameroon? That day, a fire was born inside you. Cameroon is a place that exists. Thomas Nakono is a man who exists. You will show the world that Buffon exists. This is why you became a footballer. Not because of money or fame. Because of the artistry and style of this man, Thomas Nakono. Because of his soul. This is exactly what drives Buffon to this day at his 45 years of age. But there was another series of mistakes in Gianluigi's life. The goalkeeper of the Italian national team was questioned about the alleged bets. This was part of a series of scandals that shook Italy just a couple of weeks before the start of the World Cup in Germany. The 28-year-old goalkeeper was suspected of betting on five Juventus games between 2004 and 2005. Buffon could be banned from football for up to three years. The player's lawyer said that his client is a big fan of gambling and really did bet on sports, but only before it was banned and naturally not on the local league games. John Luigi managed to get away, but after a couple of years, he once again gets accused of betting. In 2010, during the period of nine months, Buffon wrote the owner of a tobacco shop 14 checks worth about 1.5 million euros, and all would be well, but the guy turned out to also be the owner of a betting shop. The lawyer again won the case, assuring that Gigi was buying a collection of watches and helping his friend to buy land. Buffon yet again got away with it. The coincidences that haunt Gigi really do look suspicious. Let's go back to 2006 and remember the story after which Buffon forever inscribed his name in the history of Juventus. That year, the Italian football community was shocked by the news that some of the country's biggest clubs were involved in selecting referees for their matches. As a result of the proceedings, Juventus was demoted to Serie B and deprived of two titles. This meant that at least two seasons for the team star players would be lost. Buffon remained with Juventus despite the crazy demand for him in the best clubs in the world. The following year, Gigi, along with Del Piero, Trezeguet and Collini, returned to the team to Serie A and then to the Champions League. These players became true idols of the old lady. In 2012, Juventus finally regained its dominant position in the Italian Serie A. Buffon won his first trophy as the team's new captain. He really matured, the scandals were gone, he was devoted to football. The goalkeeper was 33 years old, he won many trophies, but as it turned out, it was just the beginning. Serie A champion eight times in a row, five times recognized as the best goalkeeper of Serie A, as well as the best goalkeeper of the 21st century. 
John Luigi set the Italian record three times for longest series of games without conceding a goal. In 2014, he didn't miss a goal for 745 minutes. Two years later, he improved his performance by a minute, and on the third attempt, he raised the bar to 11 matches. In 38 and 39 years is included in the symbolic national team, according to UEFA. In 2017, he became the goalkeeper of the year in Europe. Just think about it. At 39 years old, uh, I have to, to speak in English, but. Uh, um... Ah, okay, no, 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 no problem. No, no, no. I, I, I won't try uh, to speak. Yeah, yeah. In 40, together with PSG, wins the French League One. Then he returns to Juventus and now defends the goal of Parma in Serie B. Until now, he finds the motivation to go to the football field and train hard. So, you will write a message on your shirt that you once saw carved on a desk when you were at school. You'll write, Death to Cowards. You think it's just a motivational cry. You don't know that it's a slogan of the far-right fascists. This is one of the mistakes that will cause your family a lot of pain. But these mistakes are important because they remind you that you're human. They will remind you again and again that you don't know shit, my friend. This is good because football will do an excellent job of trying to convince you that you are special. But you must remember that you are no different from the bartender or the electrician who you will be friends with for life. He is not a saint, not a superman. Buffon's humanity is what makes him so special, no matter how hard he tries to deny it. All his career he tried to learn from his mistakes and he succeeds in doing so. When the Italians tried to boo the Swedish national anthem, it was Buffon who asked them to stop. When he learned that the road to the crash site that claimed the lives of the Torino team in the 1940s was desecrated by graffiti, it was Buffon who publicly called out the Juventus fans. In addition, Gigi devotes a lot of time to charitable activities, and when Italy lost the right to play in the World Cup in Russia, he no longer hid his feelings. And it's not because his team lost a football match or that he won't be able to go to the tournament to set another record. He cried because he understood that this was a real tragedy for the fans, for his whole country. You may be wrong, you may be going off the right path, but if you're escorted in this way, it means that in the end, you have drawn the right conclusions. My father played against Buffon and they exchanged shirts after the match. Thank you for your magic, Buffon.